Hi, Sunny. Um, so I have a question about, uh, you know, how you said that let go and surrender to a higher power. Whenever I try to do that, that, okay, whatever is coming in or whatever is going, let it be. Um, there's a huge sense of fear, a, a sort of clinging happening. And then I don't know where to rest uh, while everything is happening inside me. Um, yeah. And and I, I usually go with the fear and try to control and manipulate, uh, you know, the outcome of yes of anything. The fear is very natural with something like this, especially in the beginning. You're going to experience fear. You're going to experience like, am I doing this right? You're going to be confused. You may even fail a few times, but like only through the practice of it, you grow in the understanding of it. So with the fear, nothing special to do. Like we have to just get really comfortable with the possibility of what we don't want happening because regardless of if you fear and you try to run away from it still it remains a possibility you know like you have to uh, see that within yourself and then also you may experience it a few times that no matter what life has to offer me no matter what experience it brings me into we have to see the safeness of that. Like it will come and it will go. There's nothing for you to lose or hide from or fear. If you are meant to experience something, it will come and it will go. You need to resist nothing. So when you do this, right? Like the, you surrender and you see the mind fearing and resisting, acknowledge that. There's nothing to be done about it just start to observe the resisting mind, the reacting mind. Don't entertain it. Do your best to not entertain it. Acknowledge it happening. It, it's the same principle as before. If you become the fearer, life is miserable. But if the fear is arising and you start to acknowledge the fear happening, there's a much greater freedom in that. That is really what the acceptance principle allows you to do. It gives you a more practical tool, right? In what we discuss in weeks two and three, it gives you a more practical technique to like, okay, you observe the sensation because just by observing sensation, you are out of the thinking, which reinforces the fear. And you see things from outside of the mere thinking, which plays a story. So of course, the that technique has to be practiced but also just in a general sense if i may speak just it's it's really the difference between like just acknowledging and letting the fear be there and then still just having the attitude of being surrendered letting just letting things unfold you know and it will be difficult to balance at first but you will get it and you will start to see that even when things that you were fearing happen they just happen and then they go. And that like in those moments, if there are difficult moments, if you're afraid of something, you know, if if it is even a really difficult moment, still in, in that moment of it's happening, you just take care of whatever situation and it goes. One of my, the first books I read, read on the spiritual journey was on was the power of now, like many people. And in, in that book, there was a like a concept that was introduced that there are no problems in life, you know, there or there's no problems in the present moment. And I didn't get it at first. But as you practice this principle, you start to see that. So in the book, he said, there are no problems in the present moment. In the present moment, there are just situations that are being handled or taken care of. Problems are only in the mind, which is past and future. We think about what happened either as a problem or as something good. We think about what may happen either as a problem or something good. It's only a problem because it's conceptual and you can't do anything about it. You can only suffer it. But when it's actually here, even that situation that you maybe were resisting, you'll notice that 
you won't even perceive it as a problem. It'll just be a situation that you'll take care of. It only feels like a problem because you take even what's happening right now, which is this unpleasant situation, and you make a future out of it. What you're suffering is not the current thing. You're suffering what you think it will turn into. Again, you're only suffering the future, which is conceptual, only in the mind. So this, this is really true. There are no problems present here. The one who creates the problem and suffers it is only the, the thinking. And you see what we talked about today is like you learning to step out of that thinking and you realize that I am not the problem creator or the sufferer. This is a radical shift in how you perceive life situations and the personal life. And of course, it's a very difficult thing in the beginning because it's a whole paradigm shift, but you will get it. But you get that through, get there through, as I said earlier, like you have to really sit with these things and you have to contemplate them. Don't just take them on face value, like it's said, and I feel like it's logical or practical. No, like sit with it, contemplate it, see how, you know what, that principle that we just talked about, that there are no problems in the present moment, see and sit with, sit with this and, uh, experiment with it and see if it is actually true or not through that through your own contemplation and through you really doing your best to apply these principles in your life as you're in the midst of it all the ups and downs and the good and bad that is where this understanding grows so i will say just to summarize don't do do nothing with the fear acknowledge it's being there and grow in your acknowledgement of that which is simply watching. Be only the witness of your life. That which resists and reacts is not you. You are only the witness. Just be the witness. Find safety in the witness. The more you just learn to witness your life, the more it will just continue happening and the more the spiritual understanding will just keep unfolding to you. Just be the witness. Make sense? That helps. Yes, thank okay. you. Wonderful. Hey, Sunny. I, I also had the same situation like um, Meha, whatever she said, the fear. Um, what happened for me, I thought the fear is a really bad thing. If it happens, oh no, I, I'm perfect. Why the fear comes? I'm doing meditation. It should never happen at all. So kind of completely resisting. It's yeah. as if like I'm living in South Africa on 10,000 pound um, male tusker comes, I'm going to trying to push it. No way you can push that one or assist. It it's easily smashes me. Then I realized that, um, I think after a lot of speeches from you, it's not a bad thing at all. It's some kind of unpleasant situations or sensation. If you think in that way, it will stay here for some time, then kind of completely yes. it's gone. It took a long time to come to that kind of maturity. Um, it's kind of like a little bit tightness in my chest or something on my um, stomach, like a kind of like a knot. Then once after some time, what happened, I was kind of like fear of fear. As soon as I'm sitting in the meditation, I would be thinking, oh, the fear would be coming, fear would be coming, it comes. Then I was trying to push like anything, it never happened at all. I also went to Vipassana, uh, that also really helped me on the acceptance one. Um, so now what I'm doing is, if it comes, it will be staying for some time. I know that it's a, it's kind of like an unpleasant situation, then it will be gone. Um, so I just want to let uh, everyone knows it's not a bad thing at all. Uh, it will never it will never stay. It's kind of like a, whatever they are calling like impermanence or um, that concept. It will be going away. Just want to um, let Mega know that one. It's not a big thing at all. It it will be going definitely soon, and uh, you don't need to worry about it. Yeah, thank you just so much for sharing that. And it's so true. Thank you. I mean, you can't even hold on to anything. You can't even hold on to it if you tried. That's the beauty of it. And that's why you're returning to your witnessing because you're also like, by doing so, you'll notice that like the witness is not afraid of anything. And I, I'm speaking maybe as a witness as like, you. It, it seems like I'm speaking to something other than you, but actually what is being spoken to is the witness. The, wit the witness is not afraid of anything. It judges nothing. It wants nothing. It desires nothing. Craves nothing. Resists nothing. Cares for nothing. Has no concept of person, world. Has no concept of life. It's just aware. 
So the the fear that arises is bad for only the mind which has a notion about what fear is. You know, like we we are taught what fear is, why you fear things, why you shouldn't fear, fight fear, all these different belief systems we have. It's only in the mind. See how the it's it's a wonderful you know how like there's a um, in many movies or thing there's like what would what would this person do or how would this person perceive this situation? We we say that all the time. Like if if someone you look up to, let's say his name is like Jack or something, is like what would Jack do in this situation? We have to really start to see as like how does the witness perceive this? And you can't just merely mentally answer that question. You have to just go to being the witness that you are. And to the to the witnessing, no experience is a threat. To the witnessing, nothing is bad or good. Now, in the beginning, mind may have any ideas about this, but no, shouldn't I hold on to this? Shouldn't I do this? Just keep being the witness and like you'll see that like a profound clarity starts to come into your experience you know you stop reacting you start seeing that actually that which is reacting is not me it's arising and being seen by me the witness so truly as i said to mega the, the witness is your safe place because no matter what you're going through, it's going to be there and it's going to be as it is. It is the only stable thing that you can count on. And it is the place of wisdom. If you want wisdom, you know, before you go to a book or a talk or anything like that, go to the witness, be the witness. From that arises clarity. From that arises the understanding of non-resistance, non-attachment. The witness is that in which all experience on. Uh, unfolds comes and goes it holds on to nothing it resists nothing there's incredible wisdom in that and this understanding also that you can experience whatever is arising without any ideas about it when you take out your ideas about it it's just sensation it's just an appearance the sting of it will go even something like pain. So that has to be sat with. You know, we have, we have to brew in this. <laughs> Very well said, Sunny. Yeah. Even sometimes when you're trying to step back to being the witness and you feel like you can't or you're struggling with the practice, acknowledge even that. That's the beautiful part about this practice is that nothing can be an obstacle to it. You may feel like something is being an obstacle to it, like thinking or some crazy sensation or whatever, or even your inability to do this. But that is the main central point to grasp. The, the moment you just notice whatever's happening, just, you, just acknowledge what is hap happening and letting it be you're already in that you are in the practice you are the witness you know what we talked about earlier is like rather than being the thinker of thoughts you're just noticing the thoughts being there Not notice what that is it's just you being the witness let's say fear is arising instead of fighting the fear or thinking about what is causing your fear, you just acknowledge the sensations of fear being there? Or are you trying to do so and you're not succeeding, but even that resistance and not succeeding, you, in a moment you just acknowledge it being there? In that very moment, you are outside of it and you are simply there as the witness. The fear, the resistance to the fear, the resistance to the resistance to the fear, you can simply acknowledge. So this is always available. Anything that seems to hinder this, there's, an, there's a witnessing of.
So how could it hinder it? The thoughts they, that say, this is hard, <clears throat> this is hard, there's a witnessing of. You are the witness. You are not the thinker that says, this is hard. The moment you succumb to that thought, this is hard, you that is where you will see life from. And of course, it will be hard. That is the thing we really have to see with this. Mind says plenty of things. This is taking too long, or I'm not getting this. I'm, uh, this is too hard, or it has many ideas and resistances. The moment you start to believe in them, you be, you start seeing life from them, and that becomes your truth. It's not actually true. It's just bought into, and therefore has to be true because that is the filter now, from where you're seeing. The filter falls away right away, instantly, the moment you acknowledge the witness. Or meaning, the moment you step back into your primary, essential position as just the witness, the awareness. Because you see, the witness is not under any notion of difficult or easy, good or bad, doing this or doing that. The witness has, is beyond all mental notions. It simply is, and it's aware. That is where we have to get to know ourselves. As you begin to sit with that, as you begin to sit with yourself, you will start to notice that this is more you than anything else you took yourself to be. Whenever I sit down to meditate recently, or everything comes up during meditation. But where before I was like actively practicing, now that I'm doing self-inquiry, I sit and everything comes, everything mm -hmm. comes and I have to like let go. And when you were talking about the fear, I like letting go of the fear, just observing the sensation. I just realized that I kind of like forgot how to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just uh, like, I, it, it's the same concept. It, I just realized it's the same concept. Somehow I just uh, let go of that. Just observe again. It doesn't matter even if the mind says, oh, this is going to get worse. If you let this continue, if you observe more and the sensation gets stronger, but if you take your uh, focus into something else, let's say hand sensations or just focus into nothingness, it that particular sensation goes so my mind there like there's a belief saying like if you continuously observe that sensation it will grow and will stay with you and it's also like during the day when it comes up that sensation my mind says if you observe more it comes up more it's like becomes part of your permanent memory mm -hmm. you know the cycle yeah. So there is that that's where the that's where the kind of chaos and restlessness comes from it. You know, it's that's almost why... like playing a game with my sensations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself like trying to get rid of the sensation though? I mean, that would be lovely. Um but I guess, yeah, I do. Deep down, I do. Yeah, and, and that's okay. It's a good thing to acknowledge. You can't do anything about it. You can't make yourself not want to get rid of it. You just have to acknowledge that even. That's actually the, the easiest and the only thing that we really can do in this entire realm of being, just acknowledge what's there. Um, you know, recently I, I was asked a s similar question about a from a person who had actually just started practicing the acceptance pointer. And it, and she said, I keep doing the letting go practice, but this keeps coming back for me again and again. And I keep doing it, but it keeps happening. Like how many times do I have to do it for it to be gone? And that's actually my problem with the phrase letting go is because <clears throat> it, it gets rooted in resistance. What we're letting go is not of the actual like 
thing itself, whether it's pain that we are observing or, a, or fear or anger, we are learning to let go of resistance to it. It may still remain. It may come back again. But what you're learning to do is let it go of resistance to it. And you do it by actually acknowledging that the resistance is not your own anyway. You know, you would do so by stepping into your true self, your true position of being only the witness. Only by there you start to realize that like, because as the witness, you have no resistance. Already you experience whatever you are resisting in a whole new way, whether it's pain or fear. As the witness, you have no resistance. And from here, even the need to let go of this is gone. There's no notion of letting this go or changing this or manipulating this. It's simply just mere witnessing. That is pure acceptance. That's why I like the word acceptance, because it's just a mere witnessing, observing without judgment, a letting be. In, in just awareness of the very thing, there's no relationship. There's no notion of want or not want. Here's where you start to realize more and more that like, it is the mind and it's con the conditioning which resists, which wants things and doesn't want things. I am inherently free of that. So that's the main aspect of this practice. And so when when so here and now when you said like you you focus on it and it grows stronger as the 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 mind that wants it gone and and you know it's like it shouldn't be as strong or it should go weaker there's that suffering there's that relationship and attachment to this or resistance to it. But notice that as the witness of that, there is no problem with it getting stronger. Your job is not to let it go. Your job is not to make the sensation weaker. Your job is not even to get rid of your want of your dislike of the sensation. Your job is just to be only the witness even if you find yourself struggling with that and you find yourself still wanting it gone, step into the acknowledgement of even that. Truly, that is the only thing that you can do, but that is the only transformational factor because that is helping you realize that you are not there. You are the witnessing of it. You are the awareness of it, which is totally free, which is not in pain. In it, pain comes and goes, but it doesn't have a relationship to it. It is awareness is simply the pure allowance of pain or any other sensation. That is the that is the place that is really being pointed to with these acceptance teachings, with these letting go teachings. It's not like create a battle against all the negative stuff and try to let it go. You know, it's actually letting go of all notions of want and not want, clinging and resisting. You are you have to become like the space of this room. You have to become like the space of awareness. You have to be that which has no wants. The person may hear this and it's like, oh, I have to let go of my wants. No, no, no. You have to realize that what you are essentially has no wants. That's a mm -hmm. big difference. As a person, you can try to let go of your desires and fears. You'll not succeed ever. But that's what the beauty of the technique, the practice. It helps you realize your nature as that which never had any wants, which has no notion of want because it has no notion of even what I am. For that is only an idea. It, it actually is the truth of who you are. It's not a self-image. It's not an idea that you have of yourself based on who, based on that, where you can want things. You can only want as a person. You cannot, there's no notion of wanting because there's no notion of what I am in what you actually are. All fluffy stuff, right? Flowery concepts, but it, the practice is what makes it practical 
and understood. So see the real meaning in these acceptance practices that are inviting you to observe without judgment. Why observe without judgment? It's because that is your nature. Pure acceptance, pure allowance, simply being aware. Awareness is not less aware of pain and more aware of pleasure. It is equally aware. In it, both things come and go, flow. The mind which resists pain is also in the same awareness, which awareness is not resisting or clinging to. So you have to keep being as you are, being that which you are, stepping into your true position. Only there you'll find freedom, despite if your fear remains or this remains. And know that like these things will remain until they will serve you, like until they can no longer serve you. When something no longer can serve you, it will go. But until something remains, whether it's like a physical illness or a uh, like a pattern of pain or pattern of fear, pattern of anxiety, then it must be there. Mm. Even though it's unpleasant, it must be there. And you have to surrender to it. Only then can you become free from suffering it. Thank God for that adversity. You know, grow through it rather than resisting it. Then the whole thing you're turning on its head and rather than it being your enemy, it will actually become your friend. But yes, contemplate that everybody, that, that principle of acceptance very deeply. It's not mm -hmm. something you're doing as a practice. It's you're like, you're stepping into your true nature here and now, and you're being that, which is free from all resistances and clinging free from all notions of want and not want. And it is so powerful. It starts off very hazy and um, unclear, but it gets so, so clear. Yeah. Is that Thank helpful, Rose? So yeah, it is. Yeah. What comes up for me um, after this conversation really strongly is no matter what, do not interfere. No matter what your mind says, do not interfere. That's what comes. Like in the middle of like those unpleasant moments. I mean, when you want to hang on to something, I feel like that's my that's my rope to hang on to. No matter what, do not interfere. Do not. What comes up, do not interfere. The witness is your safe place. And being the witness, you'll find that you have no relationship to what you're witnessing, meaning no, nothing that nothing will bind you to the experience and you'll be able to allow it to come and go. And by the very stepping into your true position, you will grow in insight, which will further dissolve the hypnosis, the compulsion of getting identified with experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The main principle that I'm sharing in this video is observation without judgment, being only the witness, the motion, the motionless, the motiveless, desireless, fearless, notionless, idealless, conceptless witness. If you want to learn how to be that and how to observe your emotions and fear and anxiety and pain without suffering it, I'm offering a free mini course right now on acceptance. I'm linking it down below. If you haven't seen it yet, make sure to do so. I think it will really help you. However, if you are looking for more guided practice with this, if you want my support in a sort of a long-term manner, then learn more about my School of Awakening in which I will work with you personally and help you overcome all obstacles to this practice really help you dissolve mind identification and become free from suffering your experience. Become more and more established in your true position, your true identity of being, of formless, nameless being. So you can learn more about that below. I'll link it all as well. Um, if you have any other questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section below. But that's all for today's video. I will see you next time.